Hi everyone, and welcome to another monthly Arma Top Mods video, where I talk about some of the modifications, including total conversions, maps, missions, sound packs, and more, that are worth your attention and came out during March. With of course the recent virus resulting in several countries shutting down and many of us staying home, it's a time where many of us need entertainment while staying indoors. Many are catching up on Netflix shows or games they did not have a chance to play yet, and it's also a perfect time to check out some mods because they will lengthen your gaming experience and cost nothing. I hope all of you are safe, and without further ado, let's start with the first item on the list. So the first highlight of this month is a mission with the name Battle of Tarawa. It's made by the same creator that has delivered some really epic versions of the D-Day landings at Normandy. And this time, it's his D-Day version of the Pacific. The Normandy missions use a lot of audio files from Saving Private Ryan, and this mission uses some audio samples from the HBO show The Pacific to ramp up the chaos. The mission is really well made and well paced. It's well playable alone or with friends and continues way after the initial battle at the beach. The mission might be a little bit laggy during the first few seconds of the beach landing, but gets a lot better after that, making it more accessible for most machines. The mission is really for those who want to experience an epic and frantic mission in the style of a Saving Private Ryan with the open-ended capabilities of the Arma engine. Top notch and definitely keep an eye on this creator's next mission. Then for the next modification on the list, we are going to stay in the Pacific Theater of War with the Iwo Jima version 2 map. We've had several Pacific Theater maps in the Faces of War mod, but many of them have the same lighting, the same type of textures, and some with the same feeling to them. Now that doesn't mean that they are bad, on the contrary, they are some of the most beautiful maps out there for Armor 3. But the Battle of Iwo Jima is of course legendary because of movies like Flags for Our Fathers, Letters from Iwo Jima, and the Pacific. Now with this map you can finally recreate that intense battle and similar to the first mission we talked about, make your own D-Day style mission here. The map is not perfect, I would like to see a bit more cover and proper turret locations for the Japanese, but a good thing is that the beach where the allies land, which looks really nice with the blackened volcanic sand, is cluttered with objects to provide cover. There were of course no hedgehogs on the beaches unlike Normandy, and so to avoid the landing from becoming a prone fest, you can utilize rocks and other objects to move from cover to cover. For the third mod on today's list, we check one that is well compatible with the earlier mentioned map of Iwo Jima. The Dev Naval Legend mod by Sab adds a whole bunch of new ships to play around with. They are mostly World War II themed and vary from large cruisers to destroyers and even a U-boat. The ships themselves cannot be explored or walked on, which is a bit of a shame since it would be cool to recreate some old school single player missions on the ship fighting from cabin to cabin, but the ships themselves are very detailed and awesome to play as. They come with plenty of guns and some ships are so massive that entire servers could play and have a role on that very own single ship. Since the ships themselves are not explorable, one should see these units as units to use to cover troops during a beach landing from afar, to hold off incoming air attacks with their guns or have a large scale naval warfare on the open sea. If that's not your cup of tea though, they also look mighty fine in the background during any large scale invasion mission. Our next modification on the list is the TFTW Female Characters mod by Iceman. This mod is very self explanatory. It adds two new faces in the game that are female and offers two variants of each, making a total of four different skins. They come with tactical paint and without. There have been other mods already that have included female characters and some try to recreate the skeletal structure as well, but this is purely centered on changing the face and the skins look really nice and believable. Some of the female mods out there look really weird, but these blend in well with all of the other characters. You have to apply the faces yourself though, either in your profile setting or in the editor, by searching for the ID names Carter or Madrano. I don't consider myself a social justice warrior of any kind and that we have to make sure that everyone is represented all the time depending on the scenario, but for missions that take place in modern times, and especially missions like aliens attacking Earth or even Halo missions, it's a welcome addition since plenty of women take up arms to protect their homes as well. In fact, the actress Michelle Rodriguez is represented in both the movie Battle Los Angeles and Halo 2, so I rest my case. Next up is an update for a mod rather than a new release, and I've had multiple subscribers notify me on this update. 
This was actually very helpful and I encourage anyone to let me know if there are any significant updates for any existing mods for Arma that might be worth noting and highlighting in one of these types of videos. The Operation Trebuchet First Contact mod has been updated and has been blessed with a whole bunch of new characters, vehicles and weapons. The different types of elites look gorgeous and the attention to detail is staggering. Basically with this mod, the other Covenant mod Primal Dawn kind of becomes obsolete unless you want to deal with the Flood infestation. Vehicles like Spirits but also Banshees are now usable and work like a charm. I know many people had waited for this update and got really impatient about it, but I think that the models show what time and love can do to a product and I bet we will see these awesome units in plenty of upcoming missions. And to all mission creators out there, maybe not have them as enemy units always, but what about a mission where you play as the elites, kind of like in Halo 2 as the Arbiter? Just saying. Next we have another custom mission and this time I cheat a little bit, but probably want to add one of these in the mod videos each month. You see, this particular mission was uploaded way before this month, but I only found out about it recently and has barely any downloads, so I want to give it some love. Therefore, I might add one or two mods each video that might not necessarily uh, be from that particular month, but are worth checking out. Your own recommendations on mods will help greatly to select those, so feel free to let me know. This mission is inspired by the Return to Castle Wolfenstein game, and is a single player mission that lasts between 1 and 2 hours. It really captures the feel of the old game, with you treading through dungeons as you fight German soldiers and even some supernatural enemies. Sounds are used from the old game and it really stays close to home on the missions it is based on. Unfortunately, I do have to mention one thing that does ruin the experience a little bit and that is that many of the AI do not seem to acknowledge the walls in the dungeon areas and therefore will already start shooting at the walls even before you enter the room. This means that for some parts you hear constant and constant gunfire, which is definitely very annoying. Nevertheless, I do hope that you realize by the footage that I took that it's still at least worth checking out to see how well it captured the feeling of that old classic game. Then on the list we find the Escape from Tarkov sound pack. Sound packs are to me always fun to discover and try out because they can add so much more intensity to the missions. I still think Dynamic Sound and JSR Sound are king with you desperately wanting to take cover once you're taken under fire but this one might also be worth a look at. Initially I was not that impressed with the sounds that the weapons themselves make, though weirdly enough the reloading sound was crisp and clear and the shell casings hitting the floor was a nice detail that gets left out. But the weapons themselves lack a certain punch, I thought, but they definitely do not lack that if third parties are using the weapons. If you are on the receiving end of a firefight, it sounds intense and really cool. It has a sharp and bombastic feel to it, with explosions giving you the shivers, wanting you to stay prone for longer. It is a sound pack that I believe works better in smaller scale missions, maybe where you are tackling enemies with a team of 4 to 6 men. It's of course difficult to talk about a sound mod in a video since the sounds need to do the talking for me. I have made a small scenario with plenty of squads to showcase the sound pack for the next 20 seconds or so. Then we arrive at another mission, and this time it's the mission called The Bunker. This mission is created by WW Tomahawk WW, and I have actually covered an earlier mission by him called Liberty. Tomahawk is really good at creating awesome looking set pieces that look gorgeous and this mission is no different. It is part of the Black Storm mini campaign of which two earlier missions have already been released, and in this mission you are heading to an underground bunker to defuse a nuclear device. The opening battle is very tense and spectacular and makes good use of scripts and effects. It should also be worth noting that none of these missions require any other mods, so that's a plus in terms of storage space. The last two thirds of the mission take place in the bunker and this is really cool we see very few missions take advantage of this setting. It feels like the Metro games, since you are always in an exclosed space going down these long tunnels. The great thing too is that the enemy position does not feel cheap and you always have a fair chance. Some creators literally put enemy units with the guns pointing towards the entrance that you enter from, 
but here you usually have two to three seconds to react before they point towards your character. Very good use of lighting effects and sound as well, and overall, just a very solid mission. Our next modification is another map, and this time it is a map inspired by the medieval ages. Back in September, the Dark Age mod was released for Armor 3, and in all honesty, it's not really my cup of tea. It's very rough around the edges and can be quite buggy. It's also not been updated since September, so chances of it being improved are quite slim. But this map adds finally a playground to live your medieval fantasies in the openness of the Arma engine, if you are stuck at home and cannot wait for the release of Mountain Blade Bannerlord. In all honesty though, I do really like the look of the map, and it feels genuinely like a medieval village and castle. But again, when one looks closer, this map too is very rough around the edges with objects going through one another, and the rest of the map, besides the village, feels very empty and rushed. Nevertheless, for role-playing purposes or maybe a town siege scenario, the map does offer enough to work with. And then we end with a very original mini-campaign that is titled Tomb Raider, and yes, it is inspired by the old Tomb Raider games. The creator has done a great job of combining some of the most obscure mods to create something very unique. You will enter caves and old ruins by yourself armed with a trusty pistol, and by making good use of the enhanced movement mod, you can jump, climb, and dive your way across these puzzle-filled areas. Along the way, you'll be fighting mercenaries, demon skeletons, and even raptors since the Jurassic Arma mod is used. I love seeing original projects like this, and creators really going out of their way to make something different than what Arma was intended for. There are secrets to be found as well, and overall this is definitely worth checking out just to see what a creator is able to do with the editor. But I could not help but feel a bit lonely in the entire experience as it's quiet all the time and you are all by yourself. Having this mission in co-op for two, maybe three players would be amazing, but might be difficult to do with certain triggers. And that is the end of the list for this month. I hope you all could find at least one thing that piqued your interest, and you can find the links to download these mods all in the description down below. Don't forget to let me know any recommendations on mods you would like to see in the next monthly mod video, and I will see you all next time.